this is a continuation uh, the great obelisk 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 an incredible achievement for Ed and when I say Ed does everybody know who I'm talking about because you know I could be saying Ed and in someone's mind they could be thinking about my name is Mr. Ed <laughs> Edward Lead Scallon. Edward Lead Scallon. Huh? Okay, 1857 between 1951. Nice pick, boy. <laughs> I'm talking about that. That looked like some doggone Google capture. <laughs> so, this is who I'm in referencing, referencing to. Um, and he made the... Um, Core Castle in Florida. I, I personally don't think that he made it. I believe he confiscated it. So, um, back to the Blisk. The piece is over 25 feet high and weighs, uh, I'll say it the way y'all say it, obelisk. Oh. The piece is over 25 feet high and weighs over 28 tons. The obelisk is taller than the great upright at Stonehenge. All this power right over here. Oh my goodness. I mean, because we can't do it individually. I already done figured that out. I can say what I got to say. They're putting trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and billions of fake dollars to keep people shut up. Who am I? I done said what I had to say. It ain't going no further than it did. And they ain't going to do nothing. The stuff that we can do is by defeating the principalities and powers. They've been trying to take me out from yay back when. Fifth, sixth grade. Whole bus full of kids out. Tearing off my clothes and throwing rocks at me and shit. They've been trying to kill me. Everything that I've been through got me right here to this point. Right here. Yep. Back to the zero point. <laughs> I know some people don't like to hear that shit right there. The zero point. The obelisk is taller than the great upright at Stonehenge. And was moved single-handedly by Ed. See? confiscated it. He confiscated, confiscated it. Carved on its own surface is the year of completion. The year it was moved and the year and country of Ed's birth. See? Where you were born is so important. Your heritage is important. I don't care which religion you go to. They all go to the begot, 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 begotten by begot, begot, begot. And you was begotten by who? Mm. That's where all the power is. When you truly know who you are. They've given us so many different names. They've given you so many different names. I've given things so many different names. Including my son. Mm. And was moved single-handedly by Ed, carved on its surface, is the year of completion. And the year it was moved, and the year and country of Ed's birth. The hole near the top is carved in the shape of Latvian star. The Latvian star. Or Latvian. Or Latvian star. L A I T V E I N L A T V I A N The heart table Ed's romantic demeanor is evidence in the creation of the feast of love table what is love said so loosely it is a perfect heart shaped 5000 pound table Ed decided it would be too difficult to keep fresh flowers on his 
feast of love table. So he planted an exor bush in the center of the table. His original plant has been in place for almost 50 years. Um, some people are saying don't be awed by the stone carvings and the masonry work, the carpentry, the angles, but these conduits were put here for you to access and it belongs to you not just in the west but in the east all of it belongs to you everything that you've imagined everything you've been vision everything you've looked at every speck of pixel that have come out of your orbit belongs to you it was a gift I heard someone say something the other day about a gift. It's your gift. And then they went into plagiarism. And I was like, but it couldn't be plagiarized if it was a gift. Which one is it? <laughs> Are you gifting? Or are you looking to be paid? Because when you go into the terminology of plagiarism, the plague is you want something in return. That if it's a gift, you won't even mention it. Shape 5,000 pound table. Ed decided it would be too difficult to keep fresh flowers on his feast of love. So he planted an exor bush in the center of the table. His original plant has been in place for almost 50 years. The throne room. Do you have a throne room in your dwelling, in your temple? And when I say temple, you are the temple of the spirit. I am not speaking of martyr and mud. Do you have a throne room? A place where you go with inside you. With all these things coming from outside of you. I hear voices of all kinds of people. <laughs> Not white people, black people, orange, clay, copper, <laughs> red, brown, yellow, <laughs> blue. <laughs> All from outside coming in. Isn't that a form of insanity? Mm, it's a form of insanity when you try to cut, shut all that shit out. <laughs> the outside. <laughs> when you be like, I ain't got nothing to do with none of this. That's when they call you crazy. <laughs> mm -mm. Throne room. Ed believed that every man's home was his castle. And every castle should have a throne. Ed's throne weighs 5,000 pounds and it rocks. He placed Sweet Sixteen's throne behind. Ooh, what's the numbers about? Numbers. I told my granddaughter the other day, I said... They don't have enough numbers. Because she was saying, well, I could give God 10 million. She was going up, trying to be infinite about it. And I was like, it's not enough dollars for God. It's not enough dollars. <laughs> numbers ain't real. That's the image of man. There's not enough numbers. Oh, back to what I was reading. 
He plays Sweet Sixteen's throne. So what's a, what about that number? 316. Oh, Sweet Sixteen's throne behind and to the side of his own with a child's throne next to hers. All the thrones are quite comfortable except for that of his future mother-in-law. That sound like the doggone three bears, Goldilocks, right? Placed behind his own. Ed made this chair the most uncomfortable one in the castle, hoping it would cause her to cut her visit short. <laughs> Facing away from his throne, Ed built what he called his mad rocker. <laughs> mad hatters. We got mad hatters, mad rockers, <laughs> mad tubers, <laughs> mad twitters, <laughs> mad faces on books. <laughs> oh. He said that when he and Sweet Sixteen quarrel, one or the other could sit in his in this chair and rock it up. They either made up or got hungry. Aww. Was that romantic or is there more to this story? Uh, where's your throne room? The moon fountain. The moon fountain is carved from three pieces of coral. The quarter moon on the left represents the first quarter of the moon. The quarter moon on the right represents the last quarter of the moon. The third piece of coral is the fountain, which represents the full moon. The first and last quarters of the moon each weigh 18 tons. The moon fountain. Notice the pyramid effect. The full moon weighs 23 tons. Ed used this part as a fish pond. He usually had fish and water in the pond and expected visitors to stop and look at his pond. Coral is very powers. Porous. Poor house. which caused Ed to line the pond with cement. cement. He built a star island in the center of the moon pond fountain filled by means of an old pump located behind the moon fountain. Today the moon pond is used as a wishing well. If they didn't scoop the money out, I got change in there. <laughs> money taken from the pond is donated to charity. Yeah, which charity? W-I-T-C-H Char I-T The tower and living quarters The two story main tower was built to house Ed and his lost love Built of four to nine ton rocks It weighs over 240 tons The upper story was Ed's living quarters 16 steps lead to this tiny room. A few boards wrapped in burlap hung from the ceiling as Ed's bed. The first time I went to Cora Castle was on a school field trip. The Tower of Living Quarters nine ton gate this is his most outstanding achievement it is approximately 80 inches wide and 92 inches thick it weighs approximately 18,000 pounds edward found the exact center of balance and it can be moved by the touch of a finger even a child can open it with the touch of a hand the gate has been probed and x-rayed by engineers and scientists and no one has been able to give an acceptable explanation of how Edward did this. Hmm. A thousand tons of coral rock was used in the construction of the walls and tower alone. 
There are 65 sections of stone weighing about 120 tons. The average weight of the stones used in the construction of the Quora Castle is greater than those of the building of the Great Pyramids of Giza. While several of the stones were taller than those found in Stonehenge in England, what's strange about this is that no one has ever witnessed Ed at work, nor is there any record from the time he was at Florida City. I grew up in Florida City for a year between the age of five and seven. And then between the ages of 27 and 28, Florida City, to the time he was at Homestead, Southwest Florida, I stumped grounds in Homestead, Ed stayed at Florida City until 1936 A.D. That was a few years after my grandmother was born. Edward Lee Scallion's Coral Castle. At the time it was said that someone planned to build a subdivision near to him which the world had been an invasion of his privacy. So it was said he moved. The real truth of the matter, the matter, is that the same group known as the Men in Black who also visited Nikola Tesla and beat him up, came and abused Ed as well. After this incident, Ed moved to Homestead. We'll get into Nikola Tesla. It's just that I see that this information is very important at this time. Greater light.